Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about. So with that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. The stock market in general has been performing quite well, especially since we've gotten a lot of good news in regards to corporate earnings results. We also see the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones hanging on to their gains, while the Nasdaq has released three straight trading days of losses. But let's focus more on the positives, because according to Goldman Sachs, they have dubbed Nvidia as, quote, the most important stock on planet Earth, end quote. The main reason for this is because Nvidia is a proxy for AI demand, in which AI demand has been the main driver behind the general stock market. Nvidia, which creates GPUs and other products which are used to create artificial intelligence platforms, systems, and models, has has been the best performing S&P 500 stock of 2023, thus dethroning Tesla as the most traded stock by market value. You should also know that Nvidia added more than $1.2 trillion worth of market cap in the last 12 months, and they briefly became the third most valuable company in the country, ahead of both Alphabet, which is the parent company of Google and YouTube, as well as Amazon. But we're going to talk more about Nvidia a little later in this video. In the meantime, let's actually quickly talk about another technology company, which would be Apple. Apple, which is a huge technology company, which is known for the iPhone as well as their personal computers, recently released a sports app for their iPhones. This free app is called Apple Sports, and it will show real-time scores, stats, and betting lines supplied by DraftKings. And for context, DraftKings is a sports betting app, so this is going to reflect very positively on DraftKings' share price. But this is not just good news for DraftKings because it's also great news for Apple, because Apple's ultimate goal here is to push people towards Apple TV+, Plus, where they have been investing billions of dollars in live streaming sports. So it seems that Apple is going all in on sports coverage, and I would love to hear your thoughts down below about whether or not you think this is a good move for Apple, because I personally do. You should also be aware of a macroeconomic news update in regards to mortgage rates, which jumped over 7% for the first time since December. This is actually really bad news, not only for home buyers, but this is going to negatively reflect in the general stock market, because this will dim the hopes of the Federal Reserve decreasing interest rates. In general, when the Federal Reserve cuts interest rates, this will act as a positive catalyst for the general stock market. But the opposite is also true, because if they don't cut interest rates, this will cause the general stock market to trend downwards. However, there is another catalyst which could keep the stock market afloat, and that would be the momentum behind artificial intelligence. Super Microcomputer, ticker symbol SMCI, currently surged by 32.87% recently. This just adds to the massive gains that this company has already brought in over the past year, considering that their share price has surged around 750 Super Microcomputer is a one-stop shop for servers, storage systems, full rack scale solutions, and many other things. Their current share price is around $975, however analysts believe this company could surge up to $1,300 over the next 12 months. In a previous video, I actually advocated for people to buy this company as soon as the company started to pull back right here, and since then it has surged up 32% literally since yesterday. So go back and watch yesterday's video about the deep dive that we did on SMCI, which is Super Microcomputer, because our prediction literally just came true. But you may be wondering, why is Super Microcomputer surging in their share price right now? Well, I'll tell you. Super Micro follows technology developments at NVIDIA and AMD, among many others. So anytime these other companies have a technological advancement, Super Micro can integrate these advancements into their own products. However, I think the best thing in regards to Super Micro is their innovations in liquid cooling systems, and a lot of their AI clients rely on Supermicro's liquid cooling systems to cool off of their artificial intelligence machines, which tend to heat up quite rapidly. You should also be aware that Supermicro is reasonably priced, considering that they are trading at 36 times their forward earnings estimates right now. And considering that they are in a high growth industry, that means that this company is actually pretty cheap. So I would love to hear your thoughts down below about Supermicro. Next, let's move on and talk about Amazon, ticker symbol AMZN. Amazon has been incorporating artificial intelligence into 
all aspects of their business. And if you're not familiar with Amazon, they are an e-commerce leader. Amazon likes to utilize artificial intelligence for many key functions, such as proving efficiencies across their fulfillment network. And they also like to help customers find what they are looking for by serving them suggestions based on their previous purchases. And this is all done through artificial intelligence. Right now, Amazon is currently trading at $174 per share, but many bullish professionals believe it could surge up to $230 per share over the next 12 months. Amazon is slightly more expensive than Supermicro because they are trading at 39 times their forward earnings. However, this is a huge decrease from what they were trading at considering that last year their price was around 56 times their earnings. Therefore, right now may be a great time to get into Amazon stock because they are an artificial intelligence giant. And last but not least, let's talk about Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR. Palantir Technologies is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial enterprises and government agencies. And a lot of investors seem to like this company because they are only trading at around $25 per share. More specifically, their current share price is $23.59 and investors believe the company could surge up to $30 over the next 12 months. Now the problem here is that they are arguably the most expensive on this list considering that they are trading at 72 times their forward estimates. So in regards to their forward price to earnings ratio, Palantir is more expensive than Supermicro Computer and Amazon. However, we also need to incorporate the company's growth metrics because this valuation may seem rather high, except when we discount them off of their future potential growth. As of right now, analysts predict 85% annual growth over the next five years, so this is a very exciting artificial intelligence stock to buy right now. You should also be aware that this company is further diversifying their revenue streams because they were reliant on government government contracts, but recently, their commercial revenues have absolutely exploded. Palantir's commercial revenue represents an enormous growth opportunity as their AIP business continues to ignite, and AIP would stand for their artificial intelligence platform, and it seems that many commercial enterprises just love this type of technology. This demand for AIP has also reflected very positively in their share price. For instance, their US commercial revenue jumped by 70% year over year to $131 million while their US commercial customer count jumped by 55%, so this is great news for the company. More good news is that Palantir closed 103 deals valued at over $1 million each, which is twice the number that they brought in in the prior year. So again, this is more great news for the company. Lastly, you should be aware that this company has an approaching catalyst in the form of their potential to join the S&P 500, in which I believe they will be added to the S&P 500 in either the month of March or the month of June. However, even if Palantir does not join in those months, months, it is really only a matter of time before the S&P 500 absorbs this company into itself. So this is going to act as a very phenomenal catalyst for this company, thus indicating further upside in their share price. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about Palantir. But we can't talk about AI stocks without also talking about NVIDIA, which as you know, recently brought in very dominant earnings which caused their share price to skyrocket. However, there is a problem here, because as NVIDIA continues to be hyped up by artificial intelligence demand, one of two things are going to happen. Either competition is going to eat away at their market share, or NVIDIA will disappoint on one of their future earnings reports, which will be catastrophic for their share price. So I want investors to brace themselves and to take profit when necessary. According to Eric Kroll, he believes that this company will eventually become a victim to its own success. And I think investors need to be aware of this. The article goes on to say that the company's recent earnings report has added rocket fuel to an already superior stock. So Nvidia is going to increase in their shares sharply as time goes on. However, it's only a matter of time before this company ends up decreasing in their share price. So investors need to be wary of a pullback. Now, the good thing about this is as Nvidia rises in their share price, it is also uplifting other artificial intelligence companies like Supermicro Computer as well as ARM, and I personally own all three of these companies in my portfolio. However, to practice proper risk management, we need to know when to take profits on companies. And when I say take profits, I don't mean to sell all of your stock in this company. I just mean to nibble at it and take some money off of the table. To quote straight from the article, Krull says this, one of the things that I've tracked over the years is how long rallies last, and 80% of them end in 50 trading days or less. 
He goes on to say, you should be expecting some sort of correction and some calendar timing comes into play after you have had a very big year. Again, I'm not advocating that you should sell your entire position, but rather I want you to practice proper risk management by taking some profits off the table. After all, stocks don't just go up, so please get ready and brace yourself and remember to take profits periodically before these magnificent companies pull back in their share price. And that would include both Nvidia as well as Supermicrocomputer. As I've stated, as Nvidia continues to climb in their share price, it also lifts up other companies, including ASML Holding and Applied Materials. For context, both of these companies are semiconductor manufacturing equipment suppliers. And I hold both of them in my portfolio, and they have both recently gained around 4.2 and 4.7% respectively in their share prices. So I would love for you to do your own due diligence and research on ASML as well as AMAT, because I believe these companies are absolutely phenomenal. So I would love to hear your thoughts about both of these companies down below. Next up, let's talk about some fintech news. And one of my favorite fintech stocks would be SoFi Technologies. So far, it's been a rather slow year for SoFi Technologies, and if you didn't know, SoFi essentially operates as a digital bank. So far, this company has lost around 15% in their share price, despite the company actually becoming profitable for the first time ever in a recent quarter. Right after the earnings report in which this company brought in profitability, the company spiked in their share price off of this great news. But after this gain, the company has since been declining in their share price, and it doesn't make much sense to me, because fundamentally this company is still very solid, and here's what I mean by that. For the company's four of 2024, although their revenue is anticipated to fall between 5 and 8%, their technology platform and financial services segments are anticipated to jump by at least 50% during that same time period. Therefore, SoFi Technologies has guided for a 20 to 25% boost in their revenue every single year from 2023 to 2026, and this is a fantastic CAGR for this company in regards to their revenue growth. But it seems I'm not the only one that has identified this, because major institutions and hedge funds have also been investing heavily into this company, and we as investors need to pay attention to what smart money is doing. In regards to institutional ownership, during quarter four, around 542 filers made investments in this company, or at least held investments in this company, and this would equate to an 8.84% increase from the prior quarter. So this is really good news in regards to institutional ownership for SoFi Technologies. But the news gets even better, considering that hedge funds, which really is smart money, were even more bullish, with a total of 100 107 funds disclosing a stake in the company, which is up from 101 funds from the prior quarter. Again, this is great news. And lastly, when it comes to SoFi Technologies' largest shareholders, we see companies like Vanguard, BlackRock, Silver Lake Group, State Street, and Geode Capital Management. Vanguard owns around 81.49 million shares, and they recently bought around 5.05 million shares in the fourth quarter. Likewise, BlackRock owns 40.49 million shares, and they recently added 278,277 shares in the recent quarter. Following suit, we have Silver Lake Group, which has 31.15 million shares of SoFi Technologies, and they did not end up adding to their position in quarter four, so their position remained the same. But unlike them, State Street actually added around 1.2 million shares in quarter four for a total of 16.17 million shares. And then lastly, we have Geode Capital Management, which owns 14.97 million shares, and they recently acquired around 708 1,226 shares during quarter four. So again, this is just more great news. That's why it doesn't make sense to me why the company has fallen around 15% in their share price. So I'm using this as an opportunity to further nibble at this company. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about SoFi Technologies. But they are not the only fintech company that we're gonna be talking about today because next up we have Block. Block recently jumped by 12% in their share price, ticker symbol SQ, after the company said that it plans to grow its Cash App business, and they also want to use Cash App to use as a bank for their users. So this is a very positive development. Block, which is a payment and fintech company, because they operate a fintech app, now expects their full year 2024 adjusted EBITDA of at least $2.63 billion, which beat analysts' estimates of around $2.41 billion dollars. So this is absolutely great news. So if you want more exposure to a phenomenal fintech company, feel free to look further into Block. But we're not done talking about fintech companies, because we also have New Holdings, which I personally hold in my portfolio. New Holdings, ticker symbol NU, recently delivered strong quarter four results that reflected very strong revenue growth. The company also increased their purchase volume and deposits, but let's focus on their quarter four revenues. They brought in $2.4 billion for their 
revenue, which exceeded Wall Street estimates because they thought the company was only going to bring in $2.34 billion. But despite this revenue beat, the company still slipped in their share price by around 1.6%. But despite this small decrease in their share price, the company added 4.8 million customers in quarter four. This means that the company added a total of 19.3 million customers year over year, which added to their total global customer base of 93.9 million. To put this into perspective for you, the company grew from 54 million active users all the way up to 93.9 million users in just two years. So this company is rapidly growing. According to their CEO, he says, as we work towards surpassing the 1 million customers milestone in 2024, we are investing heavily in new growth avenues to keep transforming potential into profit, end quote. And that's exactly what I and other investors want to hear from this company. So feel free to look further into new holdings. We also have Mercado Libre in the news because they recently released their quarter four results. If you haven't heard of Mercado Libre before, they are a Latin American e-commerce giant. And recently they reported $165 million worth of net profit in quarter four, which was very good. The only real problem here is that their higher sales were offset by a tax hit, which resulted in very flat metrics in some regards. But if we were to exclude things like this, Mercado Libre's net profit would have been around $383 million. But the news gets even better. More good news is that Mercado Libre posted a 42% year-on-year increase in quarterly net revenues to where they brought in $4.26 billion, which crushed analysts' estimates to where they thought the company was only going to bring in $4.12 billion, but instead they brought in $4.26 billion. When you think about this company, think of Amazon, because this company is literally nicknamed the Amazon of Latin America. However, they're actually a little better in some regards, and here's why. Mercado Libre is more accurately described as a combination between companies like PayPal, eBay, and Amazon. Now, clearly, Amazon and PayPal dominate the Western markets. However, for global exposure, I like to go to Mercado Libre, and that's why I hold all of those companies in my portfolio as long as they are publicly traded. Mercado Libre also has a very long growth runway ahead of them, and I believe they will continuously appreciate in their share price, which is why I am a personal holder of Mercado Libre, ticker symbol M-E-L-I, ticker name Melly. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this company down below. Next up, let's talk about a company which wasn't too fortunate in regards to earnings reports, and that would be Intuit, ticker symbol I-N-T-U, which recently dropped by 2.4% in their share price. Overall, Intuit actually had a mixed bag in regards to both positive and negative news. For instance, they brought in stronger than expected fiscal quarter two earnings, which was very good. On top of that, they also brought in strong revenue growth of 24% in its online services segment of the small business and self-employed group. So again, this is more good news for the company. For context, if you didn't know, Intuit is actually the parent company to other brands such as TurboTax and QuickBooks. But it's not all good news because the company did issue softer than expected quarter three guidance, and this disappointed investors because this guidance came in below Wall Street expectations, and that's why the current share price slid by 2.4% today. In general, I actually still like this company a lot, and I would love to hear your thoughts about this company down below. Next up, we have a very odd story in regards to AT&T, and if you didn't know, I like AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, but out of those three, I actually like T-Mobile the best. But right now, let's focus on AT&T. AT&T is a telecommunications company which recently restored their mobile network after many hours of an outage. This outage was so widespread that the FBI and the US Department of Homeland Security both became involved in this. Early in the day, wireless phone customers from multiple carriers started reporting problems and they actually experienced a wide outage, and it soon became clear that AT&T's network was the culprit for this outage. However, the odd thing about this is that the actual cause of the outage is still unclear and it's under dispute. According to an AT&T spokesperson, they said we have restored wireless service to all our affected customers. They went on to say, we sincerely apologize to them. Keeping our customers connected remains our top priority, and we are taking steps to ensure our customers do not experience this again in the future, end quote. But then this begs the question, why is the FBI involved? Well, here's why. The federal government is investigating whether or not this outage was caused by a cyber attack, because if so, the FBI and Homeland Security want to know about it. 
AT&T is a massive company with around 87 million subscribers, which would make them the third largest US retail wireless carrier right behind Verizon and T-Mobile. I personally don't have an opinion on whether or not this was just some strange glitch or if it was a cyber attack. However, we do have some indication because this did happen back in 2008. After all, it's not the first time that AT&T has suffered a widespread outage. Because like we said back in 2008, the company dealt with an extensive wireless internet failure in one of their US Northeastern areas. The culprit for that incident was a glitch in the company's networking systems, and this could be the potential cause for this outage as well, but as of right now, we just don't know. So I will keep you updated on this story, and I would love to hear your thoughts about this down below. Lastly, let's talk about the long-awaited Reddit IPO, and I can't stress this enough. Literally, I am so excited for this IPO because it's going to be insane. Once this company becomes a publicly traded company, we could see their share price go absolutely parabolic, or perhaps we could see the exact opposite. Who knows? All I know is that I'm very excited for it. If you're not familiar with Reddit, they operate a social media type platform and they recently disclosed on Thursday that it had filed an initial public offering and they intend to trade on the New York Stock Exchange. So far, this is not new news. However, here is the new news. The social media firm inked a content licensing deal with Google and they will trade under ticker symbol RDDT. On top of that, we also got to see some hard numbers in regards to what Reddit generates as a business. In 2023, the company generated around $804 million worth of revenue, and in 2022, they generated around $666.7 million in revenue, with gross margins of around 86 and 84% respectively. Now, we do need to keep in mind that this company is not profitable because they are posting net losses, to where they brought in a net loss of $158.6 million in 2022 and $90.8 million in 2023. Now, what I like about this is that their net losses are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. And considering that they have phenomenal gross margins, it's only a matter of time before this company becomes majorly profitable. We also need to remember that Reddit had more than 100,000 active communities with more than 73.1 million daily active users. So this is great news for this company. On top of that, Reddit has more than 1 billion posts and 16 billion comments. So again, it just shows you the popularity of this platform. Overall, I'm extremely excited for this company once they actually launch their IPO, but as of right now, we don't know when this will happen, and we also don't know how many shares will be issued. But I will keep you updated on this because I'm very excited about this IPO, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about this down below. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new, comment down below any and all of your thoughts, and I will see you in the next YT video.